Hi again. Today I want to take a look at solutions. Let's begin by considering a solution of carbonated water. Now, carbonated water can be broken down into two parts. The solvent, the major part, which in this case would be water, and the minor part, that which is mixed with the water, which in this case would be carbon dioxide gas. Another example of a solution is seawater. Again, the major component being water, and the minor component being sodium chloride. But it wouldn't be the only minor component. It makes up about 3% of seawater. Other substances that could be present, magnesium chloride is also present in small amounts, as is sodium sulfate. as well as some potassium salts as well. Solutions don't always have to involve liquids though. We can have gases. The major part of air is nitrogen gas, making up about 80%. The remaining 20%, or a little bit under 20%, is oxygen gas with trace amounts of carbon dioxide and water vapor. This particular unit is going to focus on the use of water as the solvent that's present. I want to take a look at water dissolving a couple of different compounds. So let's begin by looking at what happens when we take water and we mix it with what's called an ionic compound. So this material, calcium chloride, is what we call an ionic substance. I can recognize it because it's got a metal and a non-metal part to it. When that dissolves in water, and here's what that would look like, in this case, the chlorine ions, which are these particles, they get surrounded by water. It sort of bonds and connects with the chlorine ion, pulling it out. So now that this negative ion is free to move around. And likewise here, in this case, these particles here, they represent my calcium ions with a positive charge. And again, the water molecule is capable of bonding with these slightly positive particles to pull them around. And as a result, ionic materials tend to make very good conductors of electricity when they're dissolved. We call this breaking apart of an ionic solid by the liquid. We refer to it as dissociation. So we would say the calcium chloride dissociates into ions when it's placed into water. And we would also notice that we would get one calcium for every two chlorine, as given by the formula here. So we would get two negative ions and one of these two plus ions floating around. Contrast that with when we take a substance like this and dissolve it in water. Notice there's no metal present. This is what we refer to as a, a molecular compound. I recognize it because it has non-metals in it. So when we take a substance such as that and place it into water, so we start off with this chemical. It's called methanol. And when we dissolve it, again, the water molecules surround it and make some sort of weak interactions and weak bonds with the methanol itself. But the substance remains in, intact. It doesn't dissociate. And since it doesn't dissociate, there are no ions. And if there's no ions, it is a very poor conductor. Let's look at a little bit of calculations from solutions. In my first question, I want to determine the mass of sodium carbonate required to make this solution. We refer to this as the concentration of my solution. The concentration of a solution is given by the number of moles 
divided by the volume. So this would be how many moles we have present. This typically is the volume measured in decimeters cubed or liters. Let's look at what I'm given in this question. Determine the mass, so I'm asked to figure out a mass. Sodium carbonate, that means I can also figure out the molar mass. Sodium carbonate, Na2, CO3, and from that I should be able to figure out its molar mass, which is 106 grams per mole. I'm given the volume of my solution, 150 centimeters cubed, which I'm going to convert right away into decimeters. And I'm given the concentration of my solution. Now this deviates a little bit from the given information that I have here, but what I'm going to do here is make a little adjustment to this formula. The number of moles we can remember from a previous unit is the mass divided by the molar mass. So I can rewrite this formula as concentration mass over molar mass times volume. And if I want to find the mass of chemical by itself, Rearranging this further gives me the mass of chemical will be concentration, volume, and molar mass. So um, let's put that information then in. We've got enough space here to do it. So our concentration 0 0.100 moles per decimeter cubed. And I'm going to multiply that by the volume 0.150 decimeters cubed, and lastly my molar mass, which are 106 grams per mole. You'll notice here some units will cancel, the moles will cancel with the moles here, decimeters, decimeters, and all I'll be left with is grams at the end. In this case, when I multiply it all together, I'm going to round it off to two digits because that has two. I get 1.6 grams is required. Let's take a look at a little bit more complicated problem involving solutions. In this solution, I'm going to mix together two solutions. So I'm going to take something from here. I'm going to take a solution from here. And I'm going to pour the two of them together to make some sort of new solution. And what I'm asked about this new solution is what's the concentration of the chloride ion in this solution. Now, the number of moles of chloride ions. Don't know how I'm going to get that yet, but what will happen is there will be some chloride ions from this solution. I'll call them N1, and I'm going to get a certain number of chloride solutions from solution number two, and those are going to form my new solution. So this new chloride solution, I'm going to have to figure out somehow chlorides that I'm getting from these two beakers. Now, the final volume of my solution, I'm going to be mixing these two volumes together. And if there's 50 cubic centimeters here, and there's 50 cubic centimeters here, my final volume then is going to be 100 cubic centimeters which I might as well put directly into decimeters cubed, dividing by a thousand. So that's my volume. So my trick will be how to figure out these. Well, let's go back here to this. This is NaCl. When that dissolves, it'll dissociate into sodium ions and chloride ions. And the ratio is one to one to one. So if I know the concentration of this solution, I know the concentration of this will be exactly the same. So to get this number of moles, all I'm going to need to do 
is multiply the concentration times the volume. And my concentration is 0 0.10. My volume, when I convert it, dividing by 1,000, multiply those two together, that then gets me the number of moles, 0 0.0. 0, 0.050 0 moles of chlorine ions from my first beaker. Now, my second beaker is a little bit different. This material down here is calcium chloride. We saw it earlier. It will break into calcium ions and two chlorine ions, the ratio here being 1 to 1. Two. So every one of these will produce two chloride ions. So my number of moles of chloride ions is going to be two times the concentration and volume of this solution. So two times my 0 0.10 times my volume converted into liters or decimeters cubed. That gives me the number of moles of this material then as 0 0.010 moles. So now when I put these two together, I get 0 0.015 moles of chlorine ions. Concentration, number of moles over the volume, so 0 0.015 divided by 0 0.1 gives me a final of 0.15 moles per decimeter cubed of the chlorine ion, which we often represent with square brackets. And one other thing you should keep in mind, that if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the precipitate. Watch our next program on solutions in reactions. Thanks for watching.